الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته and good morning instagram fam friends and followers of asafi and welcome to another episode in our running series of short talks under the uh on our running series of short talks referred to as revert reflections and today I would like to continue our discussion on the concept of religious reform in Islam. And I'd love to talk to about talk about another characteristic of Islam that rebuts the need for religious reform in Islam. And that is the authority in Islam of consensus or al-ijma. Uh, in Islam, brothers and sisters, when the entire Islamic community or the entirety of its scholars in any given era agree on a religious issue that agreement is considered the clearest indication of the truthfulness the absolute truthfulness of that issue or the absolute truth of what they have agreed upon and that is because brothers and sisters this ummah this religious community does not agree upon falsehood and so if all of its scholars in any given era agree that something is right then that makes it right because they can agree all of them on falsehood and conversely if they agree that something is wrong if it's unacceptable it's a bid'a it's something which is an innovation or a heresy it's blasphemous it's disbelief then their agreement on that fact is also a clear indication that what they have agreed upon is absolutely true so if muslims without exception have considered something true for centuries no modern day reformer brothers and sisters can claim in the name of islam in the name of trying to serve islam in the name of tr- of trying to reform islam to um to correct errors in islam no reformer can say that what they agreed upon for centuries the muslims was actually false all along I want you to consider and contemplate and what we try to do here is always hold whatever people are asserting about Islam hold it up to the light of the Quran and the hadith the Quran and the sunnah the words of Allah and the words of his messenger why because they are the absolute truth they are the absolute authorities when it comes to what is true and what is false in Islam and so therefore if we always make it our habit when we hear people say something to look for the proof to support what they're saying hold what they're saying up to the bright hot light of al-wahy revelation the quran and the hadith inshallah ta'ala more often than not we're going to come out with the right conclusion about what they have said because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqin he says produce your proof if you are truthful if you're really telling the truth you should be able to support what you're saying with the words of allah and his messenger so let's look at this concept of an ijma and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about the consensus of the muslims in the quran and what his prophet has said in the sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah an-nisa the fourth surah verse number 59 he says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u ar-rasul wa ulul amri minkum wa in tanazatum fi shay'in furduhu ila Allah wa rasulihi in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawm al-akhir dhalika khayrun wa ahsan ta'wila he says subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse He says, "O oh, you who believe, O oh, believers, one of the indications that you truly believe is that you obey Allah. You obey his messenger and those in authority amongst you. And if you differ in any matter, if disputes break out, some of you are saying halal, some of you are saying haram, some of you are saying sunnah, some of you are saying bid'ah, some of you are saying right, some of you are saying wrong, some of you are saying true, some of you are saying false." فَرُدُّوهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولُ Then take that dispute and hold it to the light of the Qur'an and the Hadith. The words of Allah and the words of His Messenger. إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونِ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you truly believe in Allah on the last day, ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ That is best for you. وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا And it is superior if you want to reach the right interpretation. Now, the scholars of Islam have looked at this verse and said that there is something significant about the words of Allah in this verse and that is he said that if you dispute then take your dispute back to the Quran and the Hadith to determine the truth 
They said the opposite meaning is also intended by Allah. If you don't dispute, if you're all in agreement that something is right or something is wrong or something should be done or something shouldn't be done, then take that agreement as an indication that you're upon the truth, that you're upon the right path. He didn't tell them if they agree that they should do anything because their agreement is a hujjah, their agreement is an authority in Islam. Tayyib, we also have the hadith collected by Alameen Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala in which he said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي الحق ظاهرين لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم على ذلك. We have the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, There will not cease to be a group of my followers practicing and propagating truth openly. From, the, from my time, the Prophet is saying from his time, all the way until the end of time, there will continue to be a group. No matter how small, there will always be a group of people who practice and propagate the truth openly. They will not be harmed by those who contradict them, meaning there will be people who will say things other than what they said, believe in ways other than they believe. They will oppose what they say, but that group will exist, the group that follows the truth. They will not be harmed by those who contradict them or those who betray them until the hour is established and they are upon that way, the way of truth. The indication of this hadith, brothers and sisters, is that there will always be a group of the Muslims that are upon truth. There will never be a period in, the, in Islam where the Ummah, the religious community of Islam, is void of the truth and void of practitioners of the truth and void of propagators of truth. There will always be people who practice and follow the truth. And that indicates that there's no period in which the Muslims were upon falsehood. And if we have reformers coming today and saying, hey, this thing that the Muslims have done for centuries is wrong, and we're saying that there was a period or an extended period of time in which the Muslim Ummah, the religious community of Islam, was void of practitioners of truth and propagators of truth. And that would contradict and belie the words of the Prophet ﷺ. One last hadith I want to quote, brothers and sisters, before we close out. And that is the hadith collected by Imam al-Tirmidhiyu rahimahullah ta'ala from Abdullah ibn Umar in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna allaha la yajma la yajma inna allaha la yajma ummati ala dalala wa yadu allahi ma'al jama'a He said indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not cause my ummah my religious community my followers to agree upon misguidance to agree upon falsehood wa yadu allahi ma'al jama'a and the aiding hand of Allah is with the group, is with the collective body of the Muslims. So brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the Prophet, will never at any, at any point in time, until the end of time, will not allow this ummah, this religious community of Islam, to agree upon falsehood. And again, what that means is that the, if at any period they agreed upon something, what they agreed upon is right and it can't be wrong. And so when reformers are coming and telling us now that there's no problem with same-sex marriage, there's no problem with that. And these ideas about same-sex marriage that people have nowadays, they're antiquated, they're backward. They're from a time that's long gone and we need to, we need to update our thinking and we need to modernize our thinking and we need to get with the times. We say that's wrong because this ummah will never agree upon falsehood. And they were in agreement up until now that this is something that is wrong. And they can't be wrong. The people who are saying they're wrong have to be the ones who are actually wrong. I want to close, brothers and sisters, because one of the things we always have to do when people are saying things about Islam is we have to look at the implications of what they're saying. They have implications of accepting what they're saying. And we have to ask ourselves, does the implication of what they're saying actually undermine Islam? And if it does, we can't accept that. We can't accept a person saying in the name of Islam, calling to something, which in the, calling to something in the name of Islam which will undermine Islam, which will basically uh, contradict and oppose the foundations, the fundamental principles of our beliefs and practices as Muslims. 
So think about the implications of accepting the calls to reform Islam, the calls for religious reform within Islam. One of them is that one implication is that the Muslims for centuries have followed falsehoods. We're basically saying that our forefathers, the Muslims who have unanimously, irrespective of their madhahib, irrespective of their schools of thought, irrespective of their theological schools, because the Muslims did divide into different factions, if they've agreed that something is right or something is wrong, despite these different schools of thought, theologically and from a jurisprudence perspective, if we're saying that something is right now that opposes what they were upon, we're actually saying that all of them were upon falsehood for centuries. And what's the implication of that? It undermines the truthfulness of Islamic teachings. It's saying that there are areas and aspects and issues where Islam is not upon the truth. The Muslims are not upon the truth. It also belies the words of the Prophet when he said, there will never cease to be a group of my ummah upon the truth. There will always be throughout time a group of them upon the truth. We're saying that that's not the case. We're saying that there was eras, there were periods, spans of time, long spans of time, where the Muslims were upon falsehood. One other implication, brothers and sisters, before we close, is that, brothers and sisters, once you open this door, it will never be closed. Once you open this door of reforming religion, trying to tweak the religion, trying to make it better, trying to make it more uh, in keeping with the times, once you open that door, you'll never close it. You'll never close it. And there'll come a day when prayer will be wrong. People were saying, why do we need to pray five times a day? That's unnecessary. It's just too much prayer. We can make it three prayers. We can make it two prayers. One in the early morning and one in the evening. People will be, once you open that door, how can you tell these people no? Fasting will be wrong. Giving zakat and charity. Oh, what are we, welfare state? We don't need to be doing that. People need to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Even worse, brothers and sisters, the belief in the oneness of Allah and his right to be worshipped alone will become wrong. It's okay if people worship a rock or a tree. Allah is everywhere and in everything, people will begin to say. We have to get up with the times, they'll say. Once you open that door, that, or, that door will never, it will never be closed. And this is why, brothers and sisters, we have to push back against the calls to reform our religion. There's nothing wrong with our religion. Allah perfected this religion over 1400 years ago. And he is the one who can make something perfect and keep it perfect until the end, until the end of time. We have to believe that. That's part of what it means to truly be Muslims who believe in the absolute power of Allah to do anything. And with that, brothers and sisters, we will bring today's session to a close. But before closing, as always on Fridays, I encourage you to share the content. I encourage you to take this, take a copy of this link and drop it in your contact list on WhatsApp. Drop it in your contact list on SMS. Let the people that you know and love and care about, hey, I, I watched this today. I was inspired by this today. And I want to share with you and see if you can be equally inspired, equally uplifted. And I want you to share with others. Brothers and sisters, we want these messages to reach the Muslims uh, as much as possible. And we need your help in making that happen. Please share, brothers and sisters. Please help us. Help others to the best of our ability and by Allah's will and with his, uh, and with his allowing that to happen and, to, and for us to be successful. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here every morning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your houses, bless your spouses, bless your children, bless what remains of your day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your livelihood and your sources of income. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and make you bless wherever you may be. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabin Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته